Woo! Grand existence, citizens of the universe. I'm JD, Nicholas Jensen Denton. This is my pharmacopoeia, sort of. This is also my house. And um, pretty soon I will have a legitimate brick and mortar pharmacopoeia. Don't you worry. I just wanted to talk about plant medicine for a second. Of course I do, always. Here's the thing, man. The traditional old system, old world, which may or may not be more cognizant of certain things than us modern day people are, than us conventional folk, they use plant medicine in a totally different way than we understand plant medicine. And that is a massive, enormous chasm between what plant medicine is used for and how we understand it nowadays. And that's important because like how we understand it has to align with how it is rightfully used. Otherwise we are splitting a um, holistic paradigm into in what's the word um, into irreconcilable splinters and like here's what's happening all right the traditional folks they looked at plant medicine as entities as composites as ultimately a reflection of a blueprint of nature which could be applied to everything the blueprint was the human being as it is projected into the universe with Aries and the Pleiades in the brain and Pisces in the feet and through aligning our form on the seasonal shift of the earth we are able to see through the changing of the we're able to see through the changing of the seasons the colors the colors of the soul, the order of the soul, and how is it how it is expressed from the non-physical into the physical, and apply this global phenomenon, this universal, well, I mean, uh, global, global phenomenon, universal to human beings, onto a psychoactive understanding onto the psychology into the consciousness this map of the soul is the framework for consciousness and when we take plants out of nature as individual entities as nature created them we can look at them as some sort of reflection of this soul and when one knows thyself knows thy soul knows thy own deficiencies and their own um parts where there are more extra, then we can use the world before us to find balance within us. Because this psychological map is really just a tripartite system, the Ida de Pingala and the Shushmahana, in the, the balancing and the harmonizing of the waves and the energies that are within us that we all feel every day. Every day you wake up, you feel different in the morning than you do at night. Some people feel different at certain times of the month. I'm sure men have these very same um, cycles within us that are just a little bit less uh, immediately noticeable, unless you're very in tune with yourself, of course. And if you're not, that's what the plants are for. We use the plants to harmonize ourselves because the plants are a reflection of us. All of nature is a reflection of us. And all the ancient people figured out a way to use plants in a uh, more spiritually conducive manner. And by spiritually, I simply mean consciously, as in phenomenologically obvious, as in acting on the core of the being, as opposed to conventional science, which breaks plants down, breaks plants down into millions of tiny inconceivable pieces that only exist in the imaginative uh 
area of consciousness. They call this materialist science, and they call these atoms, elements, chemicals, compounds, and that they only see a plant is some sort of environmentally haphazard production and um, formed by the pressures of evolution, which they believe to be completely inherent random mutations. So you've got this random coagulation of matter that serendipitously started producing DMT and opium and mitragyna and all these different highly highly therapeutic substances by random chance. And then uh, looking at these plants, looking at these quote unquote random particles, pick, uh, um, picking little, picking, cherry picking them to try to say, all right, this one is the thing that's responsible for the bioactivity of this plant composite. And if they try to put all this, they, they, they would like to, try to separate all these plants into their bioactive constituents. But that's a problem because a lot of plants, their bioactive constituents are only apparent when the whole plant material is used. Furthermore, it's when the interaction and the synergy of these two, of these bioactive principles come together, that conventional scientists just get crazy confused or scared and skeptical about what's going on. It is truly, in my opinion, a schizophrenic form of paranoia, of skepticism that most scientists are riding and dying with nowadays. The goal, not the goal, but the, the, the um, perspective of a diligent scientist should be open-minded skepticism. Open-minded first then skepticism, not skeptic, and then open-minded, because with that, you're gonna get trapped in a box all your life, and you're not gonna be able to get out of it, and that's what's been happening, and that's why these dudes and these people are training these kids like me with this concept of the world is made of elements, and it's made of atoms, and nobody's ever even seen most of any of these atoms. Atoms are not real. We know that they're fictitious, but we can pinpoint, like, it's like, the only reason why they give us so much information about the nature of reality is because we're able to predict their movements to like a, a micro picosecond that's so small. And so if you can look into what we perceive as the randomness of reality and you can pull out a little bit of order from it, then you can apply that to other aspects of reality to look at underlying mechanical mechanical the the underlying mechanisms of reality and they've done this with elements but to a certain degree and so you ever ask yourself like you know if i start here and then i go halfway to here and then i go halfway again and i go halfway again how many times can i go halfway before i actually reach you and the answer is complicated but essentially these chemists have taken a world which is infinite and then broken it down to like this much and then decided that this much is the only reality that is actually causal and this is a problem because we can no longer look directly at nature and realize that there's a blueprint to this whole thing that that plant is a reflection of you or that this environment is a reflection of you and that you have power over the environment and over yourself to create yourself and create reality and activate aspects of yourself that were previously latent or unknown. And instead, all the power to manipulate reality and to bend light has been usurped from us by people who have literally only convinced us that that's not how things actually work and then put it into the inductively coupled plasma mass spectronomy and the high performance liquid chromatography like these machines that are measuring these tiny fluctuations in the spectrum that are only an infinitesimal aspect of reality. And so we have been like, our perception has been hijacked. 
and it happened when we were young and it happened through language and nobody knows what language is or where it comes from or how it works. So it was really confusing, really what's going on. We've been confused with language in the beginning. God went down and confused man with language. But before that happened, God commanded Adam to name all the things in the Garden of Eden with the language of God. And so after that happened, after the Babel and the Tower, and we went our separate ways, and we lost the godly language, we lost actually intuitive knowledge of what nature really is and how it relates to us, then we find ourselves here. We find ourselves here where we are creating atoms out of thin air and using them to affect the human condition in a completely unnatural manner. Because the truth is that your body creates its own com compounds, chemicals, elements. It creates its own body your body is self-regenerative and it can you can literally turn yourself into a butterfly if you concentrate hard enough nobody well i mean i'm not going to say nobody because i don't know you don't know what you don't know you you can you can consciously alter the code of your genome to express new traits new characteristics and and activate new mental faculties. And this has been taken from us and put into a splintered worldview. And the ability to gain like direct intuitive knowledge from a splintered worldview is cap. It's all cap. It just can't be done. Nobody can look at a DMT molecule and glean from that chemical understanding the information contained in a DMT psychedelic trip. Does that make sense? But an alchemist or a a traditional herbalist of many cultures that I could spend all day naming off of can look at a plant and they can tell you, yeah, this is going to change your way of life. This, even through not even seeing the plant before, just by observing its sense-based characteristics, can they determine that this thing is going to affect your soul and how it's going to do it. And I believe that's the missing gap between all this knowledge is knowledge of self, knowledge of soul, knowledge of spirit, and how our spirit has, how we have been led to believe that our spiritual self is somehow disconnected from matter when it, there is an inherently connective, interdependent relationship, which... Um, far supersedes individual components of composite beings, of composite entities, of plants, which are truly intelligent and sentient beings of themselves. Plants don't just affect you physiologically. They appear, their spirit appears in your life in many ways. Just think about, uh, you know, all the times we were all kids and we got really... Uh, drunk on some plant medicine and you know sometimes life just doesn't go as you expect it that's the spirits of nature altering your life okay nobody's going to tell you what's going to happen on a night out when you consume a bunch of ethanol which is actually shit it's yeast shit and so that always blows my mind anyways um That's really the ultimate goal of all this is to be able to um, use these plants to realize our true selves and our highest nature and the next grandest image of what we truly are. Because 
I'm sorry, I'm a, I keep saying because, and it's just a never ending train. So I'm gonna cut it off here. You get the point that, um, I hope you get the point. The drawback is here is that, you know, we think reality is a billion different things, but in truth, God is oneness. It is oneness that is directly within our, it is a con. My phone has died like three times trying to put together this presentation. That's how you know these archons don't want the word getting out. They're in a technology, Apple 666, first product, look it up. What I've been trying to say is that there is a complete, you know, even the scientists say that the universe came from a big bang, which equals 33 in gematria, kind of questionable, even 42. So look into it. Um, they say that the universe, I think it's 42. You're gonna have to double check me on that. Definitely 33. They say that the universe came from a big bang, one ball of plasma that began expanding infinitely. And if we trace back the expansion, it is one ball of plasma. The ancient people say the same thing, but we attach meaning and significance to what that really means differently than the ancients did. Because they saw this ball of plasma as an intelligent entity which existed inside the heart of the human that when the mind was silenced, could be experienced on a phenomenologically obvious uh, manner. Meaning with your, you know, it's not something you touch. It's not something you look at, you look at hypothetically in a computer simulation. It's something that you experience for yourself. And that unity, that oneness, which is omnipresence of reality, which is consciousness, is the source of all knowledge, truth, wisdom, energy, and reality. And you can only know those things. You can only gain true knowledge over the world by interacting with this oneness. And I believe understanding how plants relate to that versus how they are composed infinitely is a far, far more valuable tool set for applying plant medicines than anything that I've seen in the current culture, which seems to just be stealing ideas from nature and improving on them or using them for some other means in, um, you know, this materials based medicine. So, I think that's all I had to say. Godspeed. Thank you for listening to me rant. I'm Nicholas Jensen Denton. JD's Pharmacopia. If you want to talk more, leave some comments in the section below or follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Just kidding. I'm not even on Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. Um, Check out my website to read more, jdspharmacopia.com. You can also buy shamanic and medicinal plant medicine there. If I don't have what you want, reach out and call me, email me, text me. My number and email are all up on the website, and um, I'll get you what you need. So thank you very much. Have a grand existence.